Welcome back to Cynthia Unchained. This is your youthful and educational platform where we have conversations with and about children and young people in Africa. If you are new here, thank you so much for discovering this platform. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you are a returning subscriber, I really, really appreciate your presence. Please do tell a friend to tell a friend. The last couple of episodes on Cynthia Untamed have been addressing Kenya School of Law students and this is because a lot of students struggle with the bus school. They struggle when they get there, they have so much fear and really there's not enough content out there to enable students to know that this institution is doable, the exam is doable, the entire process is doable, it is Possible. And so I have been sharing a couple of things that I have learned because I it took me about two years to join the Kenya School of Law and I really had to ask my peers, guys who had gone before me, how did they do it? How did they succeed? And I really wish a lot of this information was out there for all of us to access because really it's really the only way we can make the legal profession better for everyone when there's knowledge out there and when there's people who who know that there are people who are sharing knowledge so that people can also excel. You don't want to excel alone. Imagine being the best lawyer alone. You're the only person who's successful in the entire profession. Who are you going to hang out with? You're going to be so lonely. So please, please, if you have gone through the Kenya School of Law system, you have excelled, please do share the tips that you have here with us. Now, the last episode was about discussion groups, having a study partner. How do you do that effectively? Today, we're going to talk about the individual approach. How do you study at the Kenya School of Law as an individual and excel at it? By now, you should know that this is something I will always say. I will repeat. I was told the same thing. I will repeat it to you. Refer to the law. Look at the statute. Look at the acts. If you don't read anything else, read all the laws. You see that course outline that states what laws you're supposed to read, what books you're supposed to read, what topic you're going to have that day. That course outline has everything you need. If Don't even start asking, what act should I read? No, just go to that syllabus and look at it. Everything will be tested from that syllabus, from your orals to your farm work to your bar exam. Everything will be tested from there. So always, always refer to the law. Take time and just familiarize yourself with the different acts. Then now I have explained in a previous video how you keep up with the lecturer. Now that study method will help you the entire year from term one to term two to term three. It will help you to keep studying continuously, continuously. So please refer to that video so that you have an understanding of how to read. Now, the other way of studying as an individual is to go through past papers. This is important during the group work but it's also important for you to go back to the, those past papers as an individual there's always this story oh you know at the end the lecturers are going to go through the past papers with us yes they will and not all of them will because here's the thing there is no time to do that there's only enough time to go through the syllabus so if you are lucky that at the end of the academic year that lecturers will have time to go through the past papers with you that's great but you may not always have that chance. For my cohort, we actually went through the past papers with a few lecturers, but not all of them. For others, they thought it would be more effective to give us the questions and then the firms would now present them as, as, as groups. But you see, you won't be able to, to do the presentations for all the past papers, I don't know, from 2015. And there are two exams every Every year, there's one in April, there's another one in October. It's not going to happen. So take the time and as, as an individual to look for all the past papers. For me, what I did, I went to the Dropbox link that was sent by the school and I just downloaded all the papers and I had different folders. Like there was one for conveyancing with all the past papers. There was another one for professional ethics with all the past papers. Trial advocacy, all the past papers. I had all of them and I had marked them. I had marked them. So that helped me to know I have gone through this past paper. I have not gone through this past paper. How much time do I have to do it? Please go through the past papers. The questions will be repeated. 
if they're not repeated word for word, the concepts will definitely be repeated. Imagine an exam has six questions and you need to answer five. So you can imagine if you have a repetition of the first question or the concept is the same or the facts are nearly the same and you get, let's say you get a minimum of 10 in that question. And then you make sure that in the other four questions, you've gotten seven, eight, five, here and there. In addition to your oral marks and your farm mark, you are going to pass the bar exam. That is for sure. So that's why it's very important for you to go through the past papers because the bar exam counts for majority of your mark when it comes to you passing the bar. So please make sure you go through the past papers. I mentioned in my previous video where you can get the answers. The first the first place where you can get the answers is to go to the Council of Legal Education website and download the best and worst performed papers. I think now they are there for the last maybe two academic years. Download those ones. Compare your answers against the best performed papers and against the worst performed papers. Number two, look for the answer in the statute. Number three, go and go and look for the bar exam website and if you have to buy it, just buy it. It's, it's just once for the rest of your life. You'll never buy it again. Refer to that website with utmost caution and just see if you're getting the answers correctly. It really does help because you, you'll get to a point where the more familiar you are with the questions, the more confident you are. And you'll realize that when you go to the bar exam, even if you get a question that you cannot answer entirely, you're not going to be completely blank. You will write something in that exam for sure. And one thing I learned about the bar exam, you would rather write something than not write anything at all. Because by God's favor, you may just be lucky and that examiner will just say, oh, you're closer to the answer. You At least you refer to the statute here and there and you'll not get a zero in that question. Now, here's the other thing that students struggle with. That is memory remembering things i know i have told you to read the statute but remembering the provisions oh my god that is another struggle it things just evaporate like you're just like i remember reading that but i don't remember <laughs> but i don't remember so here's a trick i learned in primary school and i think it's a bit of cramming but it's probably uh, I, for me this is what i call spaced repetition so how how you do it is you take an act uh for example what act are we going to use uh the advocates act for example let's take that example you take it and you look at section one and you read through that section but of course maybe in 10 minutes you will have forgotten there's a high probability you're not going to remember <laughs> You're not going to remember it word for word. So how I used to do it, I just take my notebook. Uh, let me use an example of this notebook I have, although this was not the notebook that I had. So I'd go to the act. You've downloaded your act. Like I told you, you must download your act. Then once you've downloaded it, you read section one of the Advocates Act. And then you close your eyes and you try and go over it again. So you just close your eyes try and say what you've read verbally and then write it down and you don't have to write it word for word because in the exam trust me you don't even have time to write word for word but try and write the key the keywords what is it that you remember from that particular provision so you just write scribble it down on your notebook just scribble it's your notebook just scribble it down scribble 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 then go to the second provision read it Close your eyes, say it verbally, then try and write it without looking at the act. Now, you know why I have said that? I know it sounds a lot like cramming, but I realized the more I did it, especially with an act, if I did it at least once or twice, it really helped me to remember the law. Remember I told you, when it comes to Kenya School of Law, the best way of passing the bar exam is to remember what the law said. You'll not remember the specific section word for word, let me tell you, unless you're, you're a really good crammer, but you will remember the concept. And for me, what will help me when I was doing the bar exam, every time I was answering a question, I kept saying, according to the act, according to this act, like I didn't even know which act I was talking about, but according to the act, according to the rules, according 
because you must show that you're not giving pedestrian answers. You must show that you have an understanding of procedure, you have an understanding of law. And by doing what I have just told you right now, it helps you to have a recollection. Now you'll have to do it several times for, for each unit. Let me just tell you the truth. You have no way out. You have to do it severally. But you see, you won't be able to remember like all the acts. So just make sure you know the most important provisions in each unit. Ask yourself, what is the most important act in conveyancing? You download them. What is the most important act in professional ethics? What is the most important act in criminal litigation? You see, then now that is what you use. For, for example, in criminal litigation, the most important act is the criminal procedure code and some bits of the penal code. But with the penal code, you're going to carry it to the exam room anyway. So I would say the most important one is the criminal procedure code. Look at the criminal procedure code from the beginning to the very end. Try and have a recollection of each and every concept because it helps you. You may not remember everything, but it will help you to answer specific issues. Because even now, when you're now approaching the bar exam, you're going to look at, at, a, at a question and you're going to ask yourself, what is it that the examiner wants? That's what I used to do. Like you have this whole story. Then as I would, as I would read it, I'd try and scribble, um, I'd try and scribble on the paper and say, oh, this is what they want. This is what they want. This is what they want. So by the time you're answering that question, you already know what you are answering, but you are referring to your law as well as to your understanding of what you got from the class or from your understanding of the, of your own reading. So that really helps when it comes to individual revision. The other point I would say is very important when it comes to individual study is to go back to the recorded lessons. Now, if you're doing your classes physically, I really don't know how this is working. I don't know if there's a camera somewhere and the, the lectures are being recorded. I have no idea. However, in my cohort, I was a student and we're doing it virtually when I was a student. So I can say that we are very privileged to have all the lessons recorded from the introduction class to the very end. And you see, you have class A to class G. So what I did is I would go back to the recorded lessons, especially for units that I found quite challenging. I would go, like I'd go to another class because maybe in my class I have struggled a bit. So I go to another class, another lecturer. They probably have another way of teaching. And I watch from the beginning to the end. And that means that you have to be very, very organized. Like you really have to organize your time because watching nearly 60 classes... <laughs> It's also not easy. So please just find a way of watching them. For me, what I used to do is I used to, I think I used to put the video on like times three or something. And then I just watch. You just watch and listen. Watch and listen. And then even as you listen, go back to your course outline and make sure that you're checking every concept. Like you've listened to the recording, you check it out. You listen to the recording, you check it out. And you cannot do this for all the nine units. So ask yourself, which is the unit where I really need to go back to the recorded class? Which is that one unit where I am just really struggling with? Now that's the unit where you, you'll say, this is where I'm going to watch the recorded class. Because it's also about being smart. It's not being about, it's not about doing so much work without being smart about it. So please, please go back to the recorded classes. It really helps you. If you are in a physical class, I think you can still access the, the recorded lessons as long as you have the KSL email. Lastly, when you are studying as an individual, this is the thing that you also need to remember. Do not study, start studying the syllabus a day to the exam, a week to the exam. Schedule your time accordingly. I do not know how you're going to do it. Whether you are working or you're not working or I don't know how you'll do it. But the one thing I think that really helped me was to have a target. I say that a month before I sit for my first paper, I must have finished the entire syllabus for all the nine units. I must have gone through the entire syllabus at least once on my own. So it meant that I really had to work hard. I'm telling you, term three, term three is where the real deal is. 
that's why I told you in term one, take it easy. Term two, just take it a bit easy but intensify. Term three, term three, you have no option. You just have to intensify. That one, that, this one, you're not escaping. So make sure you go through the entire syllabus at least a month before your first paper. So if your first paper is on 1st of January, make sure that a month before that date, you have checked the last thing on the ninth unit. Whatever that ninth unit will be for you. If it is trial advocacy, I do not know if it's um, uh, um, if it's uh, criminal litigation or civil litigation, I do not know. That's fine. If it's convincing, that is up for you to decide. But make sure you have gone through the entire syllabus on your own, on your own, not with the group, on your own. You are familiar. You know what each unit is about. If you are floating, you must know what each unit is about. At least a bit of it. You have watched the recorded lessons. Because now, that one month before the bar exam, a lot of things just happen. I'm telling you, you get tired, you panic, you cry, you, you run out of time, you get overwhelmed. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're not. Like a lot of things happen. And that one month to the bike, I'm just, time just runs. You're struggling to register. Like a lot of things are happening. The CLE portal is hanging. You can't download your bike exam. There's a lot of distraction, honestly. Like the, there's just a lot of things happening. And if you have not gone through the syllabus, those four weeks to the bike exam, just poof. So that's why it's very important to at least be prepared way, 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 way before the bar exam. Now, here's the thing. That one month before the bar exam, how do you utilize that period before you get to that point? Before now you're one month away. You see, you're revising as an individual and that's why it's important to study early. But you need to ask yourself, where am I at? So this is what helped me. Do the bar exam. Put yourself in a bar exam scenario. Just try and recreate that environment. So what I did is I just did, I, I took the latest paper. So for example, as I'm recording this, we are in October. So the last exam, the last bar exam that has been done was October. No, we are in November. <laughs> we are in November. So the last bar exam that was done was in October. So take the October paper for any unit that you want. Actually schedule schedule your time. Just say this is the exam where I'm going to do the bar exam on my own. The bar exam, each paper is three 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 hours. So recreate that room. Close the the the, the your bedroom door or wherever it is that you study. Schedule your time accordingly within those three hours. Take the bar exam paper, take your notebook or a paper and try and do the bar exam without referring. Without looking at the act, without discussing, how would you do it in a normal exam scenario? Now, you know why this helps you? Because it helps you to realize your weak areas. It helps you to identify your strengths. And it also helps you to identify your triggers. Especially, well, if you're a genius, lucky for you. If you are just a normal student, it really helps you. What is it that will trigger you? So, for example, there are people when for, for some people, they're triggered by the fact that some people finish the exam early. So when someone finishes an exam an hour to, to the end of the exam, they panic. You see, or some will panic when they go to number one and they don't know what it's about. They have no idea. They are clueless. They panic. So you see, when you put yourself in an exam scenario, you're able to know, oh, these were the things, these were the triggers, these were my weak areas. Now, you see, for me, that is what I did for every unit. And then, remember, I've told you there are places where you can get answers. So once I would do the paper, I'd go and mark for myself. Just mark. Be very frank with yourself. If you have failed, do not put a tick on that question. Just fail. Write zero there or put an X. Then see what you've scored. If your target, because you see the bar exam is out of 60, if you're targeting 55 and you score 18, it means you really need to work. 
really really hard you see it really helps you to know oh this is what i know and this is what i don't now once you've done that you will now know this is how i will utilize the one month that is left to the bar exam that's why I'm telling you it's very important to go through the entire syllabus a month before the bar exam. Try and do the papers on your own. Try and recreate the exam scenario. If you need to go to KSL and recreate that exam scenario for yourself, well and good. Whatever it is that you choose, I don't know, I don't care. It is, you, it is for you to decide. But really that method helps you. It helps you to know that, wait, this thing is not easy. But it also helps you to know, oh, wait, I'm not that bad off, you see. And that is it for our episode today. We were focusing on individual study as a student at the Kenya School of Law. Please do let me know how you were able to study as an individual. How effective was that? What do you wish you could have done better? What did you do really well? How did you survive through this entire process? I really hope that you can share this video with any student at the Kenya School of Law. Please do tell them that it is doable. I will keep sharing more content on this platform because I want both of us to succeed. I'm not going to hang out in the profession on my own. We are going to hang out together because all of us are going to be successful. Please do stay tuned to the next episode. Meanwhile, please follow me online at Cynthia Opera underscore Nyongesa on Instagram, on Twitter at Cynthia underscore Opera. Please do check out my digital platform, CynthiaUntamed.com. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.